He yelled something as he went by. I think he said, have a fantastic day. <laughs> My foam has arrived. My name is Matt. Follow along as I turn Duracell, the legendary ocean racing sailboat, into a comfortable cruising home. Earlier in the week, before my exciting package of PET foam arrived, I made the first piece of bed by gluing together foam scraps I had lying around. I'm laminating together the first piece of interior furniture that's going to go in the boat. This is going to be the fore and aft part that makes the bed. Uh, it's kind of a wall. I'm making it out of just leftover pieces of foam that I have from previous projects. So I'm just going to piece it together. They are just holding all these little, since I'm making this piece out of a bunch of small pieces, they're kind of holding, they're like clamps, they're like holding the whole thing together. It's nice to use up the little scraps. Yeah. Once I glue the pieces together, I'm going to laminate one layer of 17 ounce Biax on each side. I'm using one inch foam for this because I want it to be a little extra stiff because there's going to be holes in it for drawers and stuff. Hopefully, it'll, I think it'll be stiff enough to make up the bed. Recently we got a big package in the mail, which was 20 sheets of this PET foam. It's half inch thick. This is what I'm going to be using to build the interior of the boat. All the furniture from the bed to the cabinets to the benches, everything. What I have to do is laminate layer of fiberglass. I'm gonna use my 17 ounce fiberglass on each side of the foam. This stuff is pre-perforated, so it came perforated, has a whole bunch of holes all the way through it. Evan, the naval architect, insisted that I perforate my foam when I'm laminating both sides at the same time so that air can escape from out under it when I vacuum bag, back, vacuum bag it to the table. So this is PET foam as opposed to the green stuff that I've been using, the Divinicel. That is PVC. This PET has been recycled. So the plastic is from like plastic bottles and they turn it into structural foam. This stuff is six pounds per, per cubic foot as opposed to five pound PVC foam. So it's a little bit heavier, but it is also way cheaper than 
the PVC foam. I have to do 20 sheets of these when I'm building the interior. So I need to get pretty good at laminating them and vacuum bag them, bagging them in an efficient manner. So if anybody has any recommendations for getting my process to get these laminated more efficient than I'm all ears. Is that the main reason that you're choosing this PET foam over the five pound Divinacel because it's cheaper? Or what's the main reason? I really like that it's recycled and I view, I bought a sheet of this for doing one of the bulkheads in the boat from a local business and it, I really liked how it performed, but the biggest reason is that it is cheaper. Before I could install my new pieces, I had to remove the existing structure. This is just a storage compartment that doubled as a bench. We have pictures of Mike Plant doing projects in this area of the boat. We decided to remove the murals. We will be recreating them on a canvas or pillows in the future, so they will be memorialized. Yanni and I both like this plan, and while we know this will be upsetting to some, we have to do what makes sense to us in the end, since this will be our future home. Then I used my templating method to template the outboard wall of the bed. There will be a shelf at the top of this, and I'll cut out some storage cubbies into it as well. I used my template to cut out the piece from the flat sock laminated earlier using the new PET recycled foam. This is just one layer of 17 ounce bioxide fiberglass on each side. It is very easy to cut. This will be like a bookshelf on top of here, and then there'll be a little cubbies in here that we can put trinkets. Trinkets, honey? Uh-huh. I know how you feel about trinkets. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the reason, instead of, the reason I'm doing this instead of building just a shelf that comes off of the wall is that this is keeping the mattress away from the hall. So in the past, we've had problems with mattresses up against the hole in the hole it, when the interior of the boat is a little bit warmer, the hole gets cold and then water condenses on it and gets the mattress wet, which mildews the mattress. So this is mildew protection because this will not have water condensing on it because it stay the ambient temperature of the inside of the boat. Which part are you building next? Uh, I am building this part here that's like a big baffle that goes down the center of this. I templated out a baffle that will separate the drawer area from a larger storage area outboard and another one aft. These areas will be for less accessible items that we'd use less often like spare parts.
For some of you, this might be a little sad to watch. It is for me, even though Matt and I agreed on this decision. This boat has a storied past that will forever be a part of it down to its strong foam core. I like imagining it slicing through the waves like a knife, the wind in its sails, sailing past South America, rounding the tip of Africa with Mike Plant at the helm, living his life to the fullest. And like everything in the universe, this boat is changing. But who knows, these murals might just pop up on some cushions in the future salon one day. Show us the stateroom. So this is like the little, just like reading nook. So this will be cushions and cushions here. And it'll just be a spot to sit and read or whatever. And um, obviously these holes will be filled. There'll be a like a shelf here for books and the window up there. Probably put some holes in the back for storage. We can pull the cushion away and store stuff behind there, but yeah, pretty simple. And then over here is the hanging locker. I haven't put a face on it yet because it's gonna be a door on there. So first thing will be to glue it in and glue and tape it in and then we'll work on. It's something I have to start thinking about is uh, the like trim and cabinetry, like the doors and the drawer faces what the cubbies are going to look like. So I need, I need to like standardize all of it for throughout the whole boat. You know, if it's going to be a mahogany veneer on all the doors, what they look like and all that stuff. Hmm. So I have to learn to be a cabinet maker because I have no, never built a cabinet door in my life or a drawer or anything. You're not tempted to hire that part out? Uh, no, I'd like to learn how to do it. Of course, I'm always open to uh, tips and tricks and if anybody has any good books or videos I could watch. This is where the bed's gonna be. So, <clears throat> this outboard piece we talked about earlier, uh, there'll be little cubbies in it. On top of it will be a shelf. So I built this like baffle in here. There'll be drawers on this side and then it kind of separates the drawers from what would be storage space for stuff we don't use very often, but both here and where I'm standing here. And then there'll be drawers on the face of this. So there'll be like, I don't know, four big drawers that we can put our store clothes in, in there. And then the bed itself, like this line is the top of the mattress, this line is the bottom of the mattress. So the, the, the mattress or the bed um, supports will not be on top of these. These are just, it'll float above these. There'll be slats that go across. We've had problems with mildew in the past. I'm gonna make sure there's enough airflow into the bed as possible. And yeah, next thing to do is glue and tape all this stuff in and then uh, start painting. Wow. Yeah. When we paint, I mean, that's when we really start to see how this room's going to look and feel. Yeah. Yep. It's going to be crazy. But it's still a couple weeks away, probably. But maybe, yeah, I think probably two two weeks away. We'll start painting. Start with the bilge, do bilge coats, everything under that we don't see regularly. And then start doing fairing. Got to sweep this whole place with a skim coat of fairing and then um, and then call Dave. Our paint guy. Our paint guy, Dave. I have to admit I'm a little sad that the mural's gone, but I like the head. I like that you left the head and I think it's the right decision. got to admit you kind of like the Bitcoin sheet pad, right? Mm-hmm. Just kind of poking up, looking up behind the bench at us. Mm -hmm. It's not creepy at all. <laughs> so we haven't decided if we're going to do another episode uh, next week for the holiday. Uh, maybe we will, maybe we won't. 
in the meantime, we have uh, a few Patreons to thank. First, thank you to Doug, who is a Minnesotan like Mike Plant, uh, but he lives in upstate New York and recently found himself a trailerable 23-foot McGregor. It's very cute, and he found it abandoned with a bunch of graffiti on it, and he's going to fix it up. He said he's going to leave some of the graffiti on the boat for a character, I suppose. But uh, we wish you luck, Doug. It's uh, congratulations on your new boat. Thank you very much for being a Patreon. And also thank you to Fernando. We know Fernando. Uh, we actually did some sailing with him last fall. He is from Spain. From the, He said he's from the shadow of the Pyrenees Mountains. He's done a ton of traveling when he was a kid around Europe. And is recently getting back into sailing. He bought him this Fingolf 41 a beautiful boat. A, a few friends of mine are helping him fix it up, and he's planning to go cruising out in the Pacific here soon. He's done lots of cruising around here in the Pacific Northwest and so BC and Puget Sound and stuff. So, thank you very, very much, Fernando. We'll look forward to seeing you again soon. And also, thank you to Rebecca and to Jimmy. So, um, if you're interested in joining our Patreon community, you can find us on patreon.com at the Duracell Project. So, Thank you again. If we don't see you, have a really, really lovely holiday.